What's going on guys, it's Pokepond, back with another video for you. Lots to talk about today, obviously we got Shrouded Fable that just came out, we're going to have a look at all of the prices of singles around there, we're going to track all the price changes of seal product across Sword and Shield, it's going to be a great one. Make sure you subscribe down below to never miss an opportunity, let's get into it. Okay, so we got quite a lot of things to get into today, as always, and we're going to start off talking about Shrouded Fable. Now, obviously, Shrouded Fable came out a day or two ago. I think it's two days ago now when this video goes live. And we're just going to have a look at some of the singles prices. We were concerned that some of the Elite Trainer boxes were going to have issues on release day. Uh, but it does look like there's quite a few of them around at the moment. There are still a lot of rumours floating around, though, that there's actually not much allocation of this product around. And it may be a slightly short printed set. So it may be around for a little while and then be more difficult to get a hold of in the future. So if it's something that you do want, perhaps more for your collection side of things, as like a display piece, perhaps a uh, elite trainer box of Shrouded Fable, because I do think they look quite cool, then now would be the time I would recommend that you buy into it. There are quite a lot of uh, deals going around with sort of third party retailers, both in the US and over here in the EU, uh, specifically in the UK I can talk about as well, where you can pick it up for below retail from a few vendors online. And uh, I've noticed like local card shops around me do have stock of it as well. Uh, so go and support your local card shop. Let's have a quick look at the single prices then. So obviously the chase card is the uh, secret art rare uh, Cassiopeia and it's going for like apparently $162. Don't pay too much attention to singles prices like in the first week after release because everyone's just trying to get one. Everyone's like racing to get like the first PSA 10s and stuff like that. And single prices generally after the first week start to drop down a little bit in price. Um, so don't pay too much attention to that. I just thought it'd be interesting to pull it up and just see what kind of value is being placed on some of these cards. And I've noticed when you have a look on the UK markets as well, uh, the prices are a little bit different. So as of this morning, there are actually none of these um, basically like SAR or like the old equivalent of like art, alt arts available for this Cassiopeia. Uh, yeah, there's none available to buy on eBay. Uh, that's certainly in the UK at the moment. I'm sure there are some on the US, uh, but you can see that some have sold yesterday. Uh, last sale is 90 pounds. Um, and then you can see that, uh, you know, you've really got to catch the curve. So it was 128 and then it dropped the same day to 109. And now they're going for around about 89. But it is really a seller's market at the moment when a new product comes out just because there's not much of it around. Not many of them have been pulled yet. Um, and it's basically like they call it the, like the race to the zero or the race to the bottom. It's like how quickly can you like undersell each other and watch the price go down it is actually a really bad sign for a set that there's like none available and the price of the singles is still dropping so fast when the main chase card is um already going for like 90 pounds that's probably not a good sign that these sets holding a decent amount of value i mean it could do better in the long run um, but for me this chase card just is leads a little bit to be desired in my opinion i'm not a big fan of the uh of the trainer chase cards in my opinion i think they do better in the asian markets um but for me long term they just don't do too great anyway so we've got another new set that's coming out soon as well obviously we've got stellar crown coming out we've been talking about that a lot on the channel i won't bore you too much with that just putting it on your radar that this is due to drop mid-september sort of time i'm definitely going to pick up a bit of stellar crown i think i'm going to get a, an etb of it at least just because i've really got back into collecting etbs recently uh, not necessarily um from a investment point of view because they're usually not as great an investment as buying a booster box of something uh, but just more on the collection side of things because um, yeah you need to ask yourself the question you know are you an investor are you a collector or are you both I'm definitely on the side of both 
I do definitely like having uh, certain things in my collection. And I've been picking up a few things this week as well. Uh, there's been a few sales flying around and I picked up some old Sword and Shield Elite Trainer boxes. I picked up a Silver Tempest because they're going quite cheap at the moment. Um, I picked up, I got a really good deal on a Chilling Rain Elite Trainer box as well. I think I paid £32 for that. Um, I did used to have a Chilling Rain Elite Trainer box and I sold it at one point and I kind of regretted selling it. So I'm just picking that back up into my collection as well. I'm kind of running out of a little bit of room as well. So I'm probably going to transition more into buying the smaller products now. Um, you know, things like your booster bundles and the actual booster boxes themselves just because I'm running out of a little bit of room for Elite Trainer boxes. And um, yeah, it's a juggling act. I'm always like switching between what I'm buying, but Elite Trainer boxes, I've got quite a few of them and they just do take up quite a lot of space for the value. Uh, I do have plans as well, potentially at some point soon, I'll uh, put up some shelves behind me as well and then that'll give me a little bit more space and I can display some of my uh, more premium uh, elite trainer boxes so yeah so mid-september we got stellar crown coming out sorry got sidetracked there and um, the uh, booster boxes are coming out at the same time as the booster bundles uh, so if you don't want to invest 100% into a uh, booster box because it's a lot of money to you. Uh, you can pick up these booster bundles which are similar pack to cost ratio and uh, I think they're really gaining in popularity these little booster bundles. It's a good way to get into a set uh, without too much monetary outlay and they are just so small and compact and good for storing for the long term. So I'm a big fan of them and if you want more of a showy display piece then I recommend the Elite Trainer Box but obviously you get a little bit less value for money there. Let's have a look at the uh, Pokemon Center. So Pokemon Center UK, we've got no changes here really from last week. Absolute madness that Fusion Strike is still available as a booster box. This is easily the best buy out there for retail price at the moment if you're here in the UK. I say it every week, I'm sure the US viewers are envious that we can still pick these up for retail price. If these went back into stock on Pokemon Center US, I would imagine there would be a mad rush for them and they would sell out almost instantly. In the US markets where they've been out of stock for quite a long time, you've really seen that significant price jump up in Fusion Strike, which I do expect to see here in the UK once it goes out of stock. I do need to talk about a few things. Uh, we need to talk about rumors that are floating around at the moment. I'll always inform you whenever I'm hearing anything on the grapevine. Apparently, there's a potential reprint of Brilliant Stars and Silver Tempest coming here in the UK. Nothing has been confirmed yet, so take that with a pinch of salt. We don't know if it's true or not. Could happen. It's it's quite baffling to me that they would do that. I mean, we're getting so old now, um, like in the product life cycle for these two sets. Uh, Brilliant Stars, I mean, release date, February 25th, 2022. We're like two and a half years now since Brilliant Stars came out. So that's quite surprising to me that they would consider doing a reprint on there, especially where they've moved on so far now into Scarlet and Violet they really are just milking the end of the sword and shield cash cow if you ask me and um it's really really gonna set back uh anyone who's invested in brilliant stars and silver tempest um but i mean on in the grand scheme of things in the long term it doesn't mean that much it just means that it's another opportunity to get into these two sets for retail they are both available at the moment for retail you can still get into them and i do say that i do think that they will do well when they go out of stock this is just going to delay that process if we get a reprint on brilliant stars and silver tempest it depends how big it is um but it just means that again we're just going to delay and kick the can down the road a little bit and it's going to be another i don't know five to six months maybe even a little bit more before we see it go out of stock and then it start to appreciate in price silver tempest is getting up there in age as well we're nearly at the two year mark on silver tempest that came out november 11th 2022 so I'll always let you guys know whenever I hear rumours like that. We don't know whether it's going to happen or not. Don't panic. Don't dump it. It's like 
when we invest, we invest for the long haul. You need to be prepared to sit on something and have your money tied up in it for at least two to three years. And um, I do think that if you buy into Silver Tempest or Brilliant Stars now for retail, you're not going to be disappointed. If it gets reprinted now, I don't think you're going to see it much cheaper. It might drop 10 10 pounds 15 pounds perhaps on what it is now below retail just depends on how much of it there is available will it still go up in price in two to three years i'm quite certain you can never be a hundred percent certain of course but if we follow the trend of everything else um then it it looks quite likely okay let's move on to uh the us pokemon center um, this reprint I don't think will hit the US. I mean, it's possible it might do, but um, it, I think it's unlikely. You still have Silver Tempest in stock. Brilliant Stars you don't have in stock, and Brilliant Stars did see a bit of increase in price when it went out of stock in the US. So if you do see a reprint on Brilliant Stars hit the US, uh, then I would expect to see that price drop down around about $30, $40 temporarily while it's in stock for retail. Um, but yeah, something to bear in mind. Silver Tempest, the last Sword and Shield set in stock for the US. And I, I do think that if you don't get the reprint, and this goes out of stock soon, probably between now and Christmas, I do think you'll see Silver Tempest raise up in price. Uh, the There's been a lot of talk recently by Pokemon YouTubers that are focusing um, mainly on sort of like singles and PSA 10s and saying it's the end of the alt art era and all alt arts are crashing and uh time to sell everything okay you guys need to understand like um i can explain it from my perspective as a youtuber like a lot of these things are just sort of like buzzwords that are like in the in the news at the moment so to speak it's on the tip of everyone's tongue and the way youtube works is you can uh, basically throw your morals out the window and make clickbaity videos about everything's crashing. Like, if we look at things, okay, like, yes, you're seeing a slight decline in price on, like, the, the alt art Lugia from uh, Silver Tempest from about June. So, less than, well, nearly two months, it's been having a slowly, slow decline in price, but that's after. A really big climb in price and um, I mean a lot of these videos are just clickbait okay these people get paid for how many views they get on their videos you need to understand that so when you see these titles and these videos saying oh arts are crashing sell everything bloody blah, blah really you just need to zoom out on some of these charts and just see actually it's raised up in price like if we take like a trend line between February sort of time to the uh, July it's had quite a decent climb up in price this is just a little bit of a price correction and uh, nothing too serious to worry about it's still a fantastic um, piece of artwork um, the Lugia V I'm a big fan of it I'm a big fan of the moody cards and I'm going to start looking at the single prices a little bit more because single prices do deter help determine the price of sealed product however um, sealed product is not reliant purely on the single price that's something to bear in mind it doesn't go both ways uh, cheapest you can get a um, PSA 10 Lugia at the moment in the UK is oh sorry this is actually a 9 I pulled up 170 for a 9 um, oh here you go raw that's what I was looking at uh, 160 for a raw one I haven't looked too much into the condition but it's just something to bear in mind and we're about the same in the US for raw as well around about the $150 $160 for a raw one so the value is still there and like I said there's a lot of stock of uh, the UK Silver Tempest still available. You can also pick up uh, Silver Tempest in the US quite easily for around about retail price as well. So something to bear in mind that the Lugia V is still holding a decent bit of value, even though all the alt arts have uh, seen a little bit of a price correction. PSA 10 last, last sale is £324 here in the UK. Um, so, you know, there is definitely value uh, to be had in that box and that is going to make more and more people rip them and in turn reduce the supply of sealed if we do see a bit of a reprint here in the uk that is going to affect that um, you may see a bit of a reduction in this price we'll just keep an eye on it as and when 
if uh, if the reprint hits we'll uh, we'll obviously inform you on the channel that's one of the main reasons why you want to subscribe here on the channel because i'll keep you up to date with everything that i hear um so that you can never miss an opportunity uh just on a side note as well, I'm using a new microphone just to be a little bit more free without having my headset on. So things may be a little bit more echoey because it's picking up more of my sound sort of bouncing around the room. Let me know how you guys think the sound quality is down below. That will really help me out because um, I can just go back to wearing a headset. If not, I just thought this would, uh, would be a little bit better. Anyway, let's have a look at Brilliant Stars then. So Brilliant Stars is the other one that potentially will have a bit of a reprint. In the US, you're seeing a nice climb up in the alt art. So this is what I'm saying. Like you get people making all these videos like, oh, alt art era is dead. And it's like, uh, I mean, not if you look at the, uh, the Charizard V. I mean, you really have to like pick and choose what you look at to, to get the kind of story that they're trying to put out. Uh, apologies if you can hear in the background there's like a street cleaner or something outside my window so sorry if that's being picked up on the mic there's not a lot I can do about that um, so yeah Charles RV is creeping up in price I think it's a really nice card I've said for a long time that Brilliant Stars is a good set and I think that this card is one of the top 10 cards of all of Sword and Shield and I think it's quite undervalued um, me personally I wouldn't recommend that you invest into singles unless you know what you're doing I definitely don't know what I'm doing with singles I pick up a few here and there of cards that I like but my expertise is definitely around sealed product um, so that's why I don't really make recommendations on singles you'll have to uh, you have to make your own decisions on that one, I'm afraid. Uh, don't take anything I say about singles too seriously because I really don't know what I'm talking about. But I uh, just thought it was interesting to check the price of this as Brilliant Stars is available for retail at the moment in the UK and uh, potentially you could see a US reprint coming up soon. Who knows? Um, anyway, raw prices. So raw prices in the UK, uh, £100 is the cheapest you can pick up a raw one at the moment. I think this is such a nice card. I absolutely love it. Uh, last PSA 10 sold was 130 um, So basically the cost of a retail booster box for a PSA 10 alt art Charizard from Brilliant Stars. Let's have a look at Brilliant Stars price then. Here in the US, it is uh, going for around about 172 We're seeing a little bit of a price rise after a correction from around about May time. We're seeing that reduction in price on uh, Brilliant Stars. But I've mentioned this over the last couple of weeks. That is because when it went out of retail, you saw a real nice healthy climb up here to around about May time. Uh, around about the $190, $200 mark and we're just seeing a little bit of a price correction down to here and then uh, we're slowly going to start creeping up and I would expect that trend to continue if it doesn't get a reprint in the US I would expect it to just slowly creep up over the years. Cool set, really like it, you can still pick it up fairly cheap. Cheapest in the UK at the moment is uh, 150 on eBay uh, with photos. This guy was selling a case of them we were looking at last week. Looks like he sold two of them. So they are slowly trickling away for 150 You can pick it up from Pokemon Center for £146. Bear in mind though, if it does get this UK reprint, you may get it a little bit cheaper over the next couple of weeks from a few retailers. Let's have a look at the big boy then. Let's have a look at Evolving Skies. Evolving Skies is holding actually pretty steady here in the U over in the US. Uh, 650 last sale, 670, 670 again. Pretty similar. Um, I mean, it's basically, ignore this because this is a bit of price manipulation. It's basically been around about this 6, 660, 670 mark for, let's see, around about three months. Uh, well, since March time, really, it's had a really stable, decent price point. And I do think it's going to grow and uh, continue to go up in price very slowly over the next year or two. Like, the problem is with Evolving Skies is you're starting to price some people out of it as well. Uh, the amount of people that are willing to spend 600 quid on a sealed booster box of Evolving Skies is actually quite a small number or a small percentage of people when you look at the overall hobby of people who are buying product. Um, yeah, like we talk a lot about um, 
investment and sealed product here on the channel and there's a lot of other Pokemon YouTubers that do so as well but you do need to realize that people who invest in sealed product or put sealed product away in their collection are actually such a small minority of people just because there's a few of us making videos and we get lots of views uh, doesn't mean anything really the hobby is so huge around the globe and there's so many like casual collectors and people who just buy odd packs there's there's a lot of people actually in the hobby that you need to remember that will never buy a booster box in their whole collecting career they will just buy loose packs and that will perhaps they'll stretch to an etb um and it's just important to remember that because we are a vocal minority okay uh, we are a small group in the hobby and people really get mad at us as well that even like some big youtubers that say they're collectors get very mad at us making videos about investment um, but we are such a small part of the hobby like we make next to no difference to the price of products on release um, and I think uh, some of those people really need to uh, evaluate their perspectives is probably the nicest way that I can put it. Uh, anyway, cheapest you can get Evolving Skies booster boxes sealed in the UK at the moment is 580. Uh, that's actually quite healthy because over the last couple of months they dropped down a little bit. You were seeing a few going for around about 550, 560. And we bounced up to around about this 580, 600 range. I think that's a really healthy price for Evolving Skies. I think that is a fair market value for it. Last sales are 625. And then someone got a crazy deal here. They got um just two days ago they got one for 549 best offer accepted. So below 549. Someone got a deal there. I haven't looked in detail at this post. Perhaps there were some was some damage to it or something like that. I am not going to be too worried about that because we can see that's not the last sale. Uh, straight away afterwards on the same day you saw one sell for uh, 625 So there you go. Uh, we were talking over the last couple of weeks as well about the Elite Trainer boxes as well. They're starting to go up in price. I recommend these as um, cool products. They're nice to display. Uh, they look pretty cool. And as people start to get priced out of the um, booster boxes for keeping sealed products. I do think these Elite Trainer boxes are gonna do better and better. Uh, they are last sold for 114 for the kind of off variant. I prefer the other variant, this one here, uh, where the last sold is uh, 134, uh, including postage all in. Uh, I actually, yeah, prefer this art style a lot more than this one. And then you're seeing the Pokemon Center exclusives going for around about the 165 mark. I do think this is a decent investment long term and it's a cool uh, display product as well. Do I think you'll do better buying like a Fusion Strike booster box? Maybe. However, <laughs> Evolving Skies is so hard to predict because it's just out there in a class of its own. Like we haven't seen a set like this the i don't know at least a decade really it is the goat set it is the number one so i mean if boost if booster boxes hit 2k say in two years time what are the elite trainer boxes going to be going for i don't know you've got to make that decision for yourself but uh yeah, I think it's a good buy, personally. Um, let's have a look at Lost Origin, then. We're going through all the monsters first. Uh, Lost Origin has been on a bit of a tear recently. We need to talk about it. So last uh, last week, we were around about the $200 mark here in the US. And they're going for around about, yeah, last sale, 230 So a 30 bucks rise on 200 let's just calculate that out quick i can't do that in my head how much of a rise is that 15 percent rise in the last seven days on lost origin over in the us that's uh that's pretty spicy i would imagine that's because the giratina has been going up in price quite a bit cheapest you can get it in the uk right now is 185 for a sealed one now this is what i was saying so um last couple of weeks we were saying that the Lost Origin for around about, they were going for like 200, 220 here in the UK. And I said that was a little bit too expensive for it. I was saying that 
I think that the price of Lost Origin should be around about the 170 to 180 mark. So, you know, I guess I was right. So there's one for 185 right now. I think that's quite a good price for Lost Origin right now, considering how well the Giratina Alt Art single is doing. Uh, we'll have a look at that in, the, in a minute. Last sold in the UK for um, 197 all in. So yeah, that's looking pretty, pretty nice price that 185. So uh, yeah, you can pick it up a little bit cheaper than last sale here in the UK. Let's have a look at the Giratina V then. Last sale for the English one in a PSA 10 is 758 pounds all in. Giratina V Alt Art is just exploding in price. It's going crazy. I would never play, pay that price for it personally. Um, but I guess booster boxes and sealed for it are just going up in price as well. So um, it's going to get more expensive to try and pull it. I mean, I don't know what the pull rates for this is. But if you think about it, so like basically 750 for a PSA 10. A booster box is 200. So to pull a Giratina Alt Art and get it graded in a PSA 10 you would have to do it in three booster boxes or less to make it worthwhile. That's pretty crazy. Um, I don't know whether that's possible or not and then what are the chances of it coming out as a PSA 10 as well. I don't know. I will keep track of this because it seems pretty crazy to me that a fairly modern PSA 10 card is going for that price. I mean, what's the Moonberry on that in a PSA 10? Let's just, okay, let's just have a quick look. We're going off script here. Usually I just load up everything um, ahead of time. Do I search Moonberry on? That's not gonna bring up all of them, is it? Let's just search uh, Umbreon oh, uh, PSA 10. And because I haven't actually looked at, at this in a long time and let's see um, this is how you check by the way um, so last sold is yeah ended recently no we do all not just buy it now so last sold is like a grand for the uh, PSA 10 for the Umbreon and the Giratina was what? It was like 750. So it's almost getting up there to the same sort of price range of the Umbreon. That's crazy to me. Um, okay, we're gonna keep tracking it in the channel. Anyway, we got sidetracked. Lost Origin is going to the moon. New prediction. <laughs> Not quite, but we'll see. Fusion Strike is, again, an absolute monster as well. Been out of stock for quite a while in the US. Going for around, around about 244. Similar to last week, it was around about 236 last week, so around about a $10 price rise. Um, again, just sort of stable price over the last three months. We've been talking about this a lot. If you've not been uh, tuning into the channel recently, it, that, here we go, we'll zoom out and then you can see a good gauge of it. This is it in stock here, retail price. This is it going out of stock, climb up to around about the $240 range, and then it's just stable. Like when you zoom out on everything, everything just gets smoothed out and you can see that all of these ebbs and flows over the last month, look, this looks like, oh no, it's crashing, or like three months, look, it's up, it's down, it's up and down. Let's just zoom out, guys. No, it's just found a stable price point. That's all it is. Um, yeah, you can still pick it up for retail in the UK. Uh, cheapest on eBay is 162. You can buy it on the Pokemon Center for 146, I believe. I'm not even gonna check last sold because it's just gonna be between 140 and 160. Uh, Silver Tempest. So yeah, we were talking about this, that the Lugia is, uh, in my opinion, a little bit undervalued. Um, I think just because you can get Silver Tempest for retail in the US and in the UK, um, cheapest on eBay in the UK right now is uh, 144. Like I said, pick it up from uh, Pokemon Center for 146. It's basically the same price. Uh, we will keep you updated if there is a reprint or if we're hearing about reprints on other sets to keep you ahead of the game. I would not panic sell it if you're already bought into it. Just put it away, put it away for another year two years three years the longer you can put it away the better to be honest and then um, reach that profit point that you're happy with and then sell it 
or crack it. You know, crack it and try and get yourself a Lugia. Why not? <laughs> the more you crack, the more the sealed for the rest of us is going to go up in price. Chilling Rain. Chilling Rain is one of my favourite sets from Sword and Shield. It sat for the longest time, like two years, without any price movement. And I'm really happy to see it around about the $200 range where it's out of stock. Again, let's just zoom out on the chart. We're seeing just a pretty much a stable price point after a gain in price of it going out of stock. Uh, perhaps a little gain over the last week, uh, 117-ish, 119-ish to around about 209, 225, that 209 is uh, one with photos, so uh, we'll take that with a pinch of salt. 225 last sale on uh, Pokemon TCG. Let's have a look in the UK then, around about the 200 mark, that seems to be the agreed price now. There's one from Germany here, but then you've got to pay uh, prices from Europe and you might have to pay import tax as well. So cheapest in the UK is uh, basically 200 all in. Uh, there's another one for 200, 200. Um, that seems to be the agreed upon price. Um, some you can snipe one on auction though. Last sold here, uh, 188 all in on an auction. Um, I do expect Chilling Rain to not get a reprint and uh, to just slowly creep up in price. Um, there have been some elite trainer boxes floating around. Like I said, I picked one up last week for £32, which is well below retail, which is a bit of a steal, which is why I picked one up. Um, I would have picked up more, but again, I'm just running out of space a little bit unless I decide to uh, start displaying more here in this room, sort of behind me. Um, something I will consider doing. We never look at Rebel Clash. Let's have a look at Rebel Clash. Weird price point Rebel Clash just because there's really not much demand for it. Um, but there's not much supply either, which is why it's around about $215. I genuinely think the only people that buy Rebel Clash sealed at the moment are just people who want one of everything. Like, they're not buying Rebel Clash for Rebel Clash, they're just buying it so they have one of every set. Um, the sales data here says $224, uh, $224 is the last sold on TCG Player in the US. Cheapest on eBay right now is $220 all in. I think that's overvalued even at this point. I know there's not much of it available. I just don't like Rebel Clash personally. Um, last sold is 209 here in the UK. This is why I don't look at it every week, just because it's not sold that often. Look, last sold here for a booster box, 10th of July. That's nearly a month ago. <laughs> so there's just no supply and demand for Rebel Clash. But I thought I'd bring it up just because I haven't looked at it in a long time. So Rebel Clash, when it came out, was not popular at all. Everyone thought it was a dud set. Um, everyone hated it, but if you'd have bought it for retail price back then, retail price was like, what, like 130-ish here in the UK? I mean, you sit on it for two years, well, two and a half years since release now, then you can sell it for 209. You take off fees, which are probably going to be like 20 quid all in for eBay fees and postage. You've still made yourself, what, like... 70 quid profit what's 70 quid on a 130 investment just under 40 percent is it 70 divided by 130 times 100 53 percent profit if you just sat on it from release for uh two and a half years this is what i'm saying guys like generally over time even the bad sets go up in value you just need to be willing to sit on them for like two three four years if you sit on it for five years i do think rebel clash will start creeping up in price as well if we look in another two years time rebel clash could be you know 300 a box it might go more because again there's just not many of them available sometimes that is the play to buy sets that are sleeper sets that you wouldn't think of buying like everyone's putting away evolving skies everyone's putting away fusion strike there's going to be sealed fusion strike available for the next 10 years 20 years yes the price is going to go up to maybe 2k 3k 4k a box in 10 years time 20 years time that's entirely possible but how many people are going to be selling rebel clash in 10 years time how hard is that going to get to 
be to get. And for those people who want to get one of everything, they might be willing to pay a pretty penny for that kind of thing. Just something to bear in mind, guys. Uh, I don't recommend you buy Rebel Clash, though. That's not a financial advice. <laughs> Let's talk about the meme set, then. The meme set on the channel is it's becoming a bit of a joke on the channel. I'm buying into Darkness Ablaze just because I like the set. Everyone else hates it. Don't buy into it. It's a terrible investment. Um, we're just doing it for a bit of a laugh and to track, like we said with Rebel Clash, if it is going to go up in value over time, are the worst sets going to uh, climb up in price? For the longest time, you were able to get this for retail up until very, very recently, only a few months ago. And then we saw some selling for like 180 and I was like, woo, we're rich. Um, but we can see this week exactly why you shouldn't invest in Darkness Ablaze. There's no demand for it. So when someone wants to dump one and needs a quick sale, they can't. So then the price just goes, look, you can pick it up below retail again. <laughs> So we've lost money. I was buying some for like around about 120, 130 mark. And uh, yeah, you can still do that again now. So uh, 120 for a sealed uh, Darkness Ablaze. Don't FOMO into it. It's, uh, it's a terrible set uh, in terms of demand. And last sold here, 110. So like 20, 30 percent below retail <laughs> this late on as well. Like more than two years after after release so yeah um my darkness ablaze investments aren't looking so hot at the moment <laughs> but we're just following it for a bit of a laugh on the channel anyway guys i hope you enjoyed the video please do let me know down below whether my mic sounds okay um it's a new mic i'm testing it out we can always go back to the old one if you guys don't like it um yeah uh we've got Shrouded Fable, just come out, pick pick up some of that if you want it for display or you want to crack it. I don't think it's going to be a great investment long term. If you do want to pick it up for an investment though, I would um, wait until the booster bundles come out in a couple of weeks time and you'll be able to uh, get a little bit better pack to cost ratio on that unless you want to display an ETB for your collection. Uh, we got Stellar Crown coming out in probably about a month's time, just over a month's time, five, six weeks' time. So perhaps save your money for that as well. I am actually buying into Scarlet and Violet at the moment. Um, my advice generally for investment is wait until a set's been at that year and a half, two year mark after release and then buy into it like Fusion Strike now. That's a great buy <laughs> if you're here in the UK and you can pick that up for retail. Um, but we're entering a new era of Pokemon. I personally think that uh, we're going to have to start throwing the rule book out the window. I'm buying into Scarlet and Violet now. It's mega cheap. Um, I'm sorry, but when uh, Sword and Shield was released, when these sets like uh, Evolving Skies, Fusion Strike, Lost Origin were all coming out, you weren't able to pick up booster boxes on pre-release for 20-30% below retail. It just didn't happen back then. Now we're seeing that with all these Scarlet and Violet sets. To me, that's a deal too good to be true. I'm buying into it. I'll let you guys make up your own decision on it. I do think that it will take a while for Scarlet and Violet boxes to start going up in price. You're going to have to wait that two, three year mark to see it go up in price significantly because, um, you know, it's, it's still in the print window. It, it might get heavily reprinted. However, I don't think you're ever going to get cheaper than 20-30% below retail. I think we're at the bottom. Even if they print it into the ground, I still don't think you'll pick it up cheaper than 20-30%. If you can see deals like that on pre-order, me personally, I'm buying into it. Make what you will of it. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Make sure you subscribe down below to never miss an opportunity. A wonderful day. Peace.